Greetings to each and everybody that has uh, joined us today. I think this is one of the most important time every Wednesday, 7 o'clock, when we get in to know what time are we in and what, are, what time are we in. And also, we see how the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is, is going to take place. I just want to welcome each and everybody. Welcome all the pastors of Life Abundance. Welcome all the members of Life Abundance. It is yet a, a great time just to come into the presence of God. And I welcome all my sons and daughters throughout the country and everybody, our friends on Facebook and all our media platforms. We welcome you all in this great service. I'm not going to be long even today. Uh, I'm going to just uh, explain one thing. I, I'm, I'm going to explain the nature of God pertaining uh, uh, his coming and his uh, the, the end when the end comes. The nature of God pertaining the coming of the end. But last week we, we, we looked at one of the great important things uh, that uh, the church will be taken before the tribulation. And those are the things that are so important that one should understand. That uh, when we, if, if I may go back a little bit, uh, that the coming of the Lord Jesus is not the rapture. The come, the, 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 there is the first coming that we call the first advent, where Jesus came for the first time, where he came to die on our place, and then he conquered the grave, he conquered sin, he conquered the devil, he conquered everything for us. That was his first coming. He was born... A, of a virgin and the Bible says uh, his mother was a virgin Mary and uh, that was his first advent his first coming but his second coming will take place uh, soon after the rapture of the church so we looked at, at one of the things uh, that is very very important we looked at very powerful verses which is Romans chapter number five uh, and verse number, uh, Romans chapter number five and verse number uh, nine. When you look at that verse, you can see that, um, you know, Romans chapter number five, verse number nine. Uh, I want to read it even today, Romans chapter number five, uh, verse number nine. It, 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 it reads like this. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath. And when you look at that verse, uh, it simply uh, tells us the power of salvation, the power of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ through the blood. You, you still remember that I read a couple of verses that are so important in salvation, which was in John chapter 3, verse number 16, which was the first powerful verse when we talk about salvation. Little verse, it says, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then, and then uh, when we look at um, the book of, uh, in verse number, in, in chapter 3, verse number 11 of the very same chapter, uh, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh, no, 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 verse number, verse number 18, He that believed on him, believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believe not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So 
we said uh, in verse in chapter number three, verse number sixteen, uh, that you know when G Jesus came, only to give eternal life. He who believe will have eternal life. But in verse number eighteen, we 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 notice that uh, those that believe that the condemnation is removed from them. There is no guilt. There is no condemnation about the things that uh, you have done. That is good news. That even if you have done the unsp unspeakable things, but when you come to Jesus, when you believe in Jesus, you get eternal life. According to verse number 16, according to verse number 18, the condemn, there is no condemnation. The judgment and condemnation is removed over your life. Uh, but when you come into the last verse, which is verse number 36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abided on him. In other words, when you believe in Jesus, the first thing that is you get is eternal life, the condemnation and judgment <coughs> is removed uh, 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 upon your life, but number three, the wrath of God is removed. So now it's very, very important when we, re we read in the book of Romans chapter number 5, verse number 9, it says how much more then uh, since we are washed by the blood of Jesus, uh, it says we will, we will uh, chapter number 5, verse number, verse number 9, how much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from his wrath. In other words, uh, uh, we can go through uh, the persecutions as the children of God, but we cannot go through the wrath of God. The wrath of God is not directed to the church, which is the tribulation. It's directed to those that are against Jesus and against God. So now uh, we read that verse and also we read in the book of, of, of First Thessalonians and uh, when you look at that, uh, at that verse, First Thessalonians uh, chapter number 5, which is verse number 9, they look like twin verses, verse number 9. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So in, in, in other words, uh, the church is not going to go through the tribulations. All those tribulations that are written in the book of Romans, uh, in the book of, of Revelations, chapter number 13 upwards, uh, that we are going to get into them uh, maybe next week. Uh, it, it it does it's not a, we we are not appointed we we are not saved to go through the wrath. In other words, that is when now uh, we come into conclusion that the church will be raptured before the tribulation starts. Let me say it again: the church will be uh, 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 taken up to meet Jesus before the tribulation start. But today let us look at the nature of God. The nature of God pertaining to the end of every time that has ended before. The first, the first very interesting scripture is found in the book of Genesis chapter number 6. We're looking at the nature of God. In, in Genesis chapter number 6, you know, when you look at verse number 6, chapter 6, verse number 6, God regretted that he has created man. You, you will see that, you know, God created uh, everything and he created man. He said, let us create 
men into our own image after our own likeness. And the Bible says, when he did that, when he did that, the Bible says, he then rested. He then rested because he has done what he wanted to do, to create man. But in chapter number six, verse number six, we hear God for the first time. Uh, uh, this Bible says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. In other words, uh, people have sinned, have come uh, to do things that are against God. Uh, in such a way that when God was looking at man, at mankind, he was detested. The Bible says he, 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 it grieved him in his heart when people uh, started to sin like that. But in verse number seven, you see God says, I will destroy man. I will destroy man, which is in verse number seven, same chapter, Genesis chapter number six. Verse number seven, and the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth. In other words, God has taken the decision to destroy what he loved. To destroy what he loved. And when you look at that verse, it's so in, it's so, it's so, it's so deep in such a way that you know God is love. God is full of love. God, uh, there is nothing uh, but love when you think about God. But the way they have sinned, the Bible says it grieved God. And he said, I will destroy all men. In verse number 13 also, when you look at in verse number 13 in the same chapter, Genesis chapter number 6, in verse number 13, And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh, is come. In other words, God is communi communicating now that I'm about to finish what I have started. The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, God is taking the decision to destroy the earth, to destroy everything in the earth. But, uh, but he wanted to destroy men because uh, uh, he wa God wanted uh, to, 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 uh, everything to come to an end. But you know, uh, he's telling Noah, he's telling Noah, God is telling Noah, because he, God will never do anything without telling his prophet. He will never do anything without telling his servants. And uh, when, you, when, when you look at Noah, uh, he, why God is telling Noah, why God is telling Noah that he, he is about to, to end the, the whole earth, he is about to destroy. Why he is telling uh, Noah? Because he wanted to destroy man. Noah was a man. In verse number 8, uh, chapter number 6, verse number 8, the Bible says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In other words, if you want to escape the destruction from God, you need to receive the grace. Noah found grace. What is grace? Grace is an unmerited favor. Grace is an undeserved favor. It's something that God gives to you uh, without, you know, deserving that thing. You don't deserve it, but God gives it to you anyway. You know, when you want to really look at, uh, you know, the, the pattern uh, or the, the power of grace, the power of grace. I always, I always preach it and teach it like this. The power of grace. In John chapter number 8, that's where we see the fashion or the way grace helps or the grace is given to a person that does not deserve. 
We see that in chapter number 8 from verse number 1, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. It's early in the morning. In other words, Jesus spent the whole night in the Mount of Olives praying, but here early in the morning he comes into the church, into the temple, and the people came uh, only to hear what he received in the mountain. But in verse number 3, the Bible says the scribes and the Pharisees, they brought the woman uh, that they said they they, they caught in the act of adultery. In other words, this woman was a filthy woman, was a sinner. Uh, she has sinned. Would they brought that uh, woman early in the morning. Early in the morning. I don't want to be caught up with that. But it was early in the morning when they brought this woman. And, uh, and when they came in verse number 4, uh, it says, They said unto, unto him, Master, they said unto him, This woman was taken in adultery, in the very earth. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith thou? What are you saying, Jesus? And, and the, Bible, the Bible says in verse number 6, they said that tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. In verse number 7, I want you to hear very well from verse number 7. And when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto him, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone to hell. So, in verse number 8, And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning to the eldest, even unto the, in, unto the last. And Jesus was left with this woman. And these are the words of Jesus. Said, woman, in verse number 10, where are those, the, those accusers of yours? And had, had no man condemned you? And uh, the Bible says, she said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. That is how grace is grace works. Grace, that is where you are given. This woman was caught in the act. In other words, she, 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 she could not say no, she could not uh, tell the lie because she was found in the act. But even if you were found in the act, you know, Jesus comes to give you eternal life. Jesus comes uh, to remove condemnation and judgment. And Jesus comes to remove the wrath. So, so now, Noah found grace. Found grace. It, it, when, when, when the Bible says he found grace, it simply means he did not do what was good. But he availed himself as sinner as he was. He availed himself to God and God gave him the undeserved favor. That is in verse number, in verse number 8, chapter 6. But in verse number 9, uh, we, we then see something that is so powerful that we have never seen in the Old Testament. The Bible says he was just perfect and he was working with God and uh, and those are those are very important things uh, you know to to cap the characters the characteristics of of Noah why God had to talk to Noah the Bible says in verse number nine these are the generations of Noah now was a just man and a perfect man in the generation 
and Noah walked with God. It's, it, it is so possible, even in such a time when there is sin all over, when there is abomination all over, that you can receive the grace of God and you can walk before God uh, being justified with the righteousness of God and the righteousness of God will make you perfect even if you have done something wrong. And he was walking with God in this generation. You see, when you look at that, when you look at that, it's very, very important to know, to know that, you know, God always, uh, when, he, uh, when he is about to destroy, he does not destroy the just and the sinners. Always, he will give a way to escape to the saved people. To the, to the people that have found grace. He always, it, it, it's in his nature. He does not destroy the righteous and the sinners together. And he spoke to Noah. You know when you, when you come to Genesis now, uh, chapter number, when you come to Genesis chapter number 7, that there is something that is so powerful in chapter number 7. In verse number 1, it says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come out and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. In other words, no, God said to Noah, get into the, into the ark. Not because you build it. But he says, get into the ark because I have, have found righteous in you. In other words, you can do everything for God. But if he cannot see that you never found grace, he never sees the righteous, his righteousness in you, you will die even when you have done things. That's why all the time in my preaching, I always stress that what you do for God is not important than, than what he did for you. What, what do you do? As I am preaching, I can preach like that, like, like, like I'm preaching, I can go all over the world like I do, but if there is no righteousness in me, what I have done cannot save me. What saves a person is what God has done for you. God saw that he was righteous. Because in chapter number 6, that's where God says, build the ark. Do this, do this, do this. But after he has done everything, after he has built the ark, God says, take your family and enter into the ark because I have found you righteous. I have found amongst this nation. Though, you know, there are people even in this nation where the darkness has covered the earth. There are people that God says, it's time for you to escape. It's time for you to be raptured before the tribulations come. Now, it's in the nature of God that he will always open the way uh, for his children to escape. But if you, if you go to chapter, chapter number 7, verse number 16, you know, in verse number 16, God, he, he, they, they, they are these words. And they that went in, went in male and female, and all fish, all flesh, as God has commanded him. And the Lord shut the, 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 the ark. In other words, you don't know a build, but he has never built the keys. He built the ark, but he has never built the, the keys. When Noah entered, God shut the, the ark. It's very, very important to see that. That it's God who has the authority. It's God who tells those, who prepares those that will be raptured. It's God. And it's God who has the keys. It's God who has the keys. 
In verse number, in verse number 17, and the flood for 40 days came up upon the earth and the waters increased. But listen to this. And bear up the ark. In other words, this is, this, this is how God has orchestrated the way for them to, also, to escape. He said, build the ark so that when the rain comes, it may come upon the ark, but it is coming to take the ark up. That is the picture of the rapture. As the waters were coming up and up, which, which was the wrath of God, the ark was upon the wrath going up and up and up and up. In other words, you see, that was the way God has made a way to escape for his children. In verse number 8, and the waters prevailed and, and were increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went upon the face of the water. Ladies and gentlemen, you see, when we look at this water, it was not the rain as usual. It was the wrath of God because God says, I'm about to destroy now. Build the ark, which is the way for you to escape. So it's in the nature of God that always when God is about to bring the destruction or bring the end, he will, he will make a way to escape for his children. Let's, let's, let's look at the, at the second thing that uh, uh, shows the nature of God whenever the ends come. In the book of Genesis chapter number 17, there are powerful verses that, that the, in, in, in chapter, chapter number 18. When you look at verse number 17, chapter 18, Genesis 18, verse number 17, the Bible says, and um, uh, chapter number 18, chapter number 18, verse number 17, over 17, who said, and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I'm about to do. And when you jump to verse number 20, I will, I will, I will just put all of these things together. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, and I will go down now, and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come to me, and if I, I will know. So now God is talking to Abraham when he came into the, into the place of Mamre, and uh, Abraham, you still remember, that uh, he, 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 he ran and he prepared uh, the lamb for them, for these angels of God. And after they've eaten, they pronounce, you know, uh, the, 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 the blessing that was prolonging. Uh, it, they shortened the prolonging blessing. And they said, this time next year, you will have a son. But this is something that is so powerful about this. And uh, God, when he has finished eating, when he has finished pronouncing the, 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 the declaration that the, the following year they were going to have a son, he said, can we hide this to Abraham? He is one of us. He is like one of us. And uh, uh, God started to tell him that I'm going to Gomorrah and Sodom and I'm going to kill all of them uh, because their sins has come up to me. And uh, the Bible says, when, when then Abraham started to, to intercede for the people because he thought of, 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 his, of his nephew, Lord. And the Bible says he started then to, 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 to pray to God and to try and ease the, the wrath of God. But he, 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 all the numbers, they could not meet the criteria of God. But in chapter number seven, in chapter number nineteen, now in chapter number nineteen, you know when you read verse number seventeen, 
When you read verse number 17 in chapter number uh, uh, um, in chapter number uh, 19, 19 verse number 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for your life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And now, now the angels are talking to Abraham. No, no, to, 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 to Lord, which, which was there. You will see that uh, when these angels came, they found Lord uh, sitting at the entrance of Sodom. And as he was sitting at the entrance of Sodom, according to chapter 19, verse number 9, uh, he rose and he ran and he, 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 he asked them to come in so that they will eat and rest. And when you, when you look at verse number 4, there is something that happened. Uh, but before they lay down, the man of the city, the city of Sodom, even the man of Sodom come past. In other words, they came around the house of, of, of Lord. They, they were saying, where are these men that have entered into this house? And the Bible says, they said, we want to have sex with them. In other words, what was happening in Sodom, it was men sleeping with other men. And the women sleeping with other women. So it was an abomination. Because, because that thing is an abomination. It's more than sin according to God. The, the, the Bible says then in verse number 17. Uh, as they were, they wanted, you know, Lot started to tell them that, uh, please don't touch these men, they are holy. I can even give you my daughters that are, are virgins. And these men, they said, we don't want virgin, we don't want uh, females, we want these men, we want to sleep with them. And the Bible says, and then uh, in, in the midst of that, as they were forcing their way inside the house, then uh, these, these angels, they took uh, Lot, his wife, and his two daughters, and they, 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 they dragged them out of the city, and they said, run and escape. Because God, when he is about to destroy uh, everything that is coming to an end, he will always open a way to escape for his people. It's in the nature of God. Let me say this, if, even as I close today. You know, that is what we see in the book of, of, the, first, of the first Thessalonians, chapter number four. That is how now God is going to open the way to escape to the children of God before, before the tribulations come uh, uh, into an effect. You know, when you look at this, when you look at this as the children of God, it's very, very important to understand. In, from, from verse number 16 and 17, those are the verses that I want to convey to you uh, be, 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 before I close. Now, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. In other words, when the trumpet sound, it will be the sound to open all the graves of the saints, the people that died saved. Their graves will open first. And the Bible in verse number 17, it says, Then we which... We are, alive, we, we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so shall we be with the Lord. In other words, before the, the tribulations come, before the tribulations come, the trumpet will sound. You know, you know, there are things that we don't have to be troubled with. All this triple six, all this antichrist, all these things, they have got no power over those that are saved. Because those things, those things they will come into an effect when the church is taken to be with Jesus into the sky. Hallelujah. In other words, you need to understand that you know, as as everything is coming together, you know, I, I said to you, uh, these these times are so exciting because you know the things that all the preachers that were preaching about, all the prophets were prophesying about to us, we seeing it coming together, coming together. It's an in exciting time, and the coming of the Lord. It's not going to be far from now. It's not going to be far from now. All that we are waiting for is for the trumpet to, 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 to be blown in the east with, uh, with an archangel. And the Bible says those that died with Christ, in Christ, they will rise first. And those that are still alive will be caught up together with those that have died before. And we are going to be with the Lord forever and ever. It is in the nature of God to open the way to escape before he releases his wrath. I want you to understand that those things that, you know, uh, you know, as a child of God, you need to be stable. Uh, uh, next week, I will be talking about some of the things that are so, so deep about the the signs of the of the uh, of of the of the end time, the signs of the end time, uh, you will see that all of them has been fulfilled. All of them. There is not even one sign that is left. All of them has been fulfilled. But as they have been fulfilled, oh, only one thing we're waiting for is the trumpet to uh, the, the shout of the angel. So that we are being, uh, we are going to be caught up to be with the Lord. Next week, I want to take you through. I want to take you through through the rapture and the signs, the signs of the end time. You must, you, you found grace. If you found grace, even when the rain was coming down, those that have found the grace, they were safe in the ark. Even when those that were in, in Gomorrah and Sodom, when the end was coming, they were taken by the hand out and they escaped. Even now, as the end is coming, we are going to be taken by, by the, the rapture. We are going to be raptured as the way to escape for us. That is why in the book, in the book of Hebrews, that is chapter number, chapter number uh, two, I think, Chapter number two, uh, verse number, when, when you, you read chapter number two, verse number three, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them which had him? In other words, if you, if you neglect salvation, let me say this. It's very, very strong. If you neglect salvation, if you neglect salvation, then you are neglecting your way to escape. But all those that have received salvation, all those that have believed in Jesus Christ, they will escape in the rapture. It's in the nature of God. He does not destroy the Russians and the weekend together. I want you to catch that. If, if there's somebody who entered into this channel and uh, you are not saved, you have heard this. Not, it's, it's not a mistake that you have heard this. You need to believe Jesus. 
Because soon, the trumpet will sound and the church will be raptured. If you are here, I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I believe in Jesus. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. From today, I will follow you. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that short prayer, I believe that uh, you are saved. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you will escape the wrath of God. And uh, if you are saved, you need to worship him like nobody's business because you have found the grace and God has given you his righteousness. He has justified you and he has made you perfect in spite of the mistake you have done. But you are perfect before God. You are righteous before God. You need to give glory to him because you have found grace in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We honor you for your word. I pray that you touch each and every one. You encourage your, your children. You encourage your servants in Jesus' mighty name. That there is nothing that is above salvation. Salvation is so full and so free, but it's so powerful to keep us away from every tribulation. I give glory to you, and I pray for each and every one that are listening to me now. Those that are sick, I declare them healed. And those that are having problems, I declare solution in their problems. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I I, I believe you for the miracles that are taking place in each and every one as they are listening to me. Mir miracles financially, miracles in their sickness, miracles in everything they touch, let miracles start. I declare and I decree upon their lives that, that miracles are taking place in their homes in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you. Uh, we will meet on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. Uh, on Sunday morning, and we are we are going to have a good time with the Lord. The English service at eight, and the Zulu service at eleven. At, at ten, the, the Zulu service at eight, and the English service at ten. If you have a prayer request, if you have a prayer request. Um, there is a short code that you can you can uh, communicate with me uh, through uh, that short code. It's it's not free. It's not free, but uh, you can communicate with me uh, with that short code. It's three eight two five two. It's three eight two five two five two. Uh, with that short code, you can SMS me your prayer request and I will be on your uh, prayer request and God bless you. It's time to give in the, in, the, in the screen there before you there is an account. Give so that God will bless you. In Jesus mighty name, bless your people as they, as they give. In Jesus name.